Despot seal is on thy shore. Maryland, my Maryland. His touch is at the Hello everybody, it's Mark from MC Shaving, and you listened to the state song of Maryland. It's called Maryland, my Maryland. And of course, this is a Shave America shave. We're going to do the state of Maryland today. You know, the Maryland state flag is the only flag based on English heraldry. Now, the black and gold design of the quartered flag comes from the coat of arms of the Calvert family. And it's interesting because both Maryland and Delaware had given up a portion of land in order to make the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., and that happened in 1970. So it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, both states had agreed to give up a little bit to make up the nation's capital. But the sense that we're going to explore today from Maryland include bay, cumin, and nutmeg. Well, I chose bay to do the shave today. And of course, Bay Rum would be an awesome choice. I have a uh, sampler, again, from the Artisan Soap Shop, and this is Bay Rum. I'll hold it close so you can get a look at it. And the Artisan Soap Shop, in case you haven't heard of them or you don't know where they're from, they're uh, through West Coast Shaving is where I've been able to find them. So this is a, a wonderful scented soap, and we have that spread into the fine ceramic shave bowl that we're going to use today. And we're going to go with the Regiment Standard Issue Razor. It's a three-piece razor, and inside we're going to use a brand new blade for this shave. This is the ASCO. Now, this is another blade that comes from Lord Company. So I'll turn it around. There's the back. Lord Company. And this is uh, made in Egypt. So we're going to give this a try today. This is a super stainless. And uh, I don't know, I just I reached into my blades and there's a bunch of them from Lord. I haven't tried any. We tried a, a Big Ben a shave ago and now we're going to try this one. So got some new blades in the mix. All right. And we are going to mix the soap up with our Naked Armor a uh, synthetic brush. So here is our candle holder. There is the Naked Armor brush uh, soaking. It is a synthetic. You don't have to soak synthetics, but this is a uh, unique synthetic. It has a very stiff backbone, uh, backbone and, and it, it, it's loft. It's tight grouping. It acts like a bore brush, but it's a synthetic. And I've had that for a while now. I've, I've gone through a number of shaves and it's finally becoming soft and breaking in and the hairs are splitting, so it, it's a very nice brush uh, to use at this stage. Now for the uh, post-shave, uh, we're going to use some uh, Gillette aftershave lotion, and then I'm going to put some Rum Runner on. Now this is a um, sampler, which is number 17. This comes from West Coast Shaving. I don't know if you could see the uh, emblem there, West Coast Shaving. Now, number 17 was a soap, Rum Runner, that they had. And this was uh, just a, a little sampler that I got uh, in a pack of samples. Um, small atomizer that we can try some of their after shaves. So, let's take the brush out of the uh, brush soaker, and we're going to get to mixing up this lather. And man, if you have never shaved with a, uh, a bay rum, this definitely has some spices. It's a very nice scent. It's my first time using this. And like I talked about in my 54321 video, this is one of the soaps I hadn't shaved with yet. So I'm glad to be able to have a chance to use it. And that's the, uh, the beauty of doing these uh, shaves. Uh, across the different states. There's a whole bunch of scents uh, and it, it's really fun to try different types of soaps uh, with these unique scents. And this is uh, this is really starting to make a good lather. I am going to add, wash off my hands a little bit, and add a little bit of water. Just going to dribble it in the bowl. There we go. 
Now I could save time and mix this up off camera, but what fun would that be, right? So there we are. That's what we got so far. Nice and on the brush. We got the lather around the outside of the bowl. Now it does have some uh, air bubbles, so we still got to mix it up. And I just added the water, so we really got to work this in. So I hope everybody is doing well and that your week is going okay, having some good shaves. Yeah, this is coming along real nice. There we go, look at that. Nice and peaky. There's the end of the uh, the brush. It's doing well. I, excuse me, I got an itch on my nose. I hope everybody's staying safe. You know, this, uh, this coronavirus thing, let me tell you. I think that the media's maybe fabric you know not fabricating but blowing it out of proportion a little bit I don't think it's as bad as what they're making it out to be because you know doing some reading on the side it's it's not a high percentage of people that are young youth like I have a daughter in school and we have a very diverse community and people travel all the time overseas and uh, you know, kids are only 2% of the population that have contracted it so far, so far, or at least that we know of. And uh, there was some news that the school had sent around to the parents, you know, just letting people know symptoms to watch out for and, um, you know, that it's, it's basically a, a, a bit more involved than the standard flu and to just watch for the symptoms. And, uh, you know, the thing is this virus is uh, stays alive a lot longer than the traditional flu and that's been publicized to death and, and if you don't know then you should know that if you do contract something that feels like a very heavy flu and uh, just not normal then go see your doctor and get checked out it's best to uh, uh, you know hold up in your home or, or uh, you know, go somewhere if you have a summer cottage, whatever, whatever is available to you. And, and if nothing, then do the best you can. But, you know, don't try to pass it on to nobody. All right, here's our peaks. We got lots of lather whipped up real good. I am just going to add a touch more water, just a touch. And I don't have a lot of growth. No pre-shave today. A couple days growth, so we should be good. Uh, with the amount of lather we have here, but oh this scent oh, I Might have to go make a rum and coke after this or something. Let me tell you it's uh, the pirates are calling This is beautiful 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 lather all right We uh, we seem to have a pretty good lather here, so just gonna call that success just rub a little bit on the face. Of course, rub it in, get a little bit of hot water on there. And there we go. All right. Now I'm going to take just what's on the brush to start. And right away, oh, does this scent come right out at you? Beautiful. There is a number of uh, new channels I had mentioned that I had subscribed to. A lot of good content out there. Boy, is it going to take me a while just to sort through some of those videos and catch up, but I can't watch them all. So, just going through the titles. You know, going through the, oh, there's a big blob that fell off the brush. Going through some interesting content. Yeah, look at this lather, oh my God.
This will do just fine. Nice. Man, that's just what we had in the brush. Look at it. There's a ton left in a brush. And there's a boatload left in the bowl. Oh, okay, so Shave America series. Let's give you some, uh, some notes about Maryland. Oh, there we go. Well, I got to get my uh, notes back. Here we go. Okay. Uh, in 2012, the country saw a trend of supervisors demanding access to employees' Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, they were hoping to keep all the content of their employees appropriate. So shortly after this pattern was discovered by the public, Maryland became the first state to pass a password bill, essentially banning companies from requesting passwords from their workers. So Maryland was the leader in that category. And then just a couple quick notes from the War of 1812. So the first part, which you may already know, uh, Washington, D.C. lawyer Francis Scott Key penned our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, after watching Britain's Navy attack on Fort McHenry at Chesapeake Bay during the War of 1812. Uh, also, during that same war, residents of St. Michael's were warned of a British attack. So in order to deflect the attack, the townspeople hoist lanterns to the mass of ships and in the tops of the trees. The height of the light caused the British to overshoot the town, and this was the first known blackout. Only one home suffered damages during that exchange, and the home is located on Mulberry Street and is referred to as the Cannonball House. So if you ever take a trip to St. Michael's, you can check out the Cannonball House. I thought that was pretty neat that the townspeople would actually, you know, go through the effort and make the lights higher to assume that the town was up higher and then the British would just overshoot. All right, dipping this in the hot water, standard issue razor, here we go. First use of this, what is it? ASCO, have any of you guys heard of that? I mean, Lord Company, uh, I'm familiar with, but I've never heard of this blade before uh, I came across it. In fact, uh, you know, to date, I haven't seen any videos from anybody that mention Lord Blades. Are they not good? I mean, leave me some notes. In fact, I think earlier today I was watching a video uh, Shaving with Angelo, I think is the title of the of the channel. Anyway, he was talking about his experiences and how he got involved in wet shaving, something to that effect. And he was talking about Big Ben. And that's the first time I ever heard of anybody mentioned Big Ben other than, you know, me having it and, and me trying it for the first time uh, a shave ago. So that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. And I think, if I remember correctly, he compared the Big Ben to like an Ostra Green. You know, similar characteristics as far as uh, the sharpness of the blade, etc. So if you guys are watching this, I'd be interested to know if you tried any Lord razors, and, or I mean, I should say razor blades, and uh, what you guys thought about it. But I can say, this isn't half bad. To me, it feels mild. It doesn't feel like it's, uh, uh, you know, super sharp. Now, of course, I'm going to cut myself now, but it feels comfortable. I have no pre-shave. The soap is doing pretty good. I mean, I have some good glide. So other than the soap being effective as it is, 
I mean the blade seems to be doing pretty good too. I don't have a ton of growth either. But that's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm just going to put some more water back on here real quick. Very nice. All right. We have a ton of lather. A ton of lather. <laughs> and that was only an almond sized dollop. About the size of the fingernail of your thumb. So, pressed it into the bottom and uh, just added water. This brush really does good though, for being a very stiff synthetic brush. I, uh, I enjoy this. So instead of reaching for a bore sometimes, which is uh, uh, preferred when you mix up some harder soaps, especially if you're going to lather off of the puck and do a face lather or what have you, you want to load the brush. Sometimes you need the stiffer backbone to collect the soap. The Naked Armor series of brushes does really well. Now this one is starting to splay and give you a little mushroom effect, but uh, still a tight grouping like a boar brush. In fact this and, uh, and my Omega brush, they're really starting to break in and feel real nice. I have so much lie there I'm just going to Apply it lightly, <laughs> load it on. The scent is real nice. Doesn't take much, hardly any pressure. Look at this. Yogurt. A bay rum yogurt. <laughs> that would be cool to eat, right? Okay. Rinse off the fingers a little bit. There are some notes that I wanted to get to and share with you about Marilyn. Some really cool stuff there. So, uh, there's only a single fleet of commercial sailing vessels, which are ships ordained to transport goods or passengers. Recreational cruises are not included in that. Uh, that remains in all of North America. So the skipjacks of Chesapeake Bay's Til Tillman Island. So their uh, main operative is oyster dredging. So here's a pic of a skipjack. So a skipjack is basically a, a sailboat uh, because they have masts and things and they're, uh, they're, they're not very big vessels, but, uh, but that's pretty cool that it's the uh, single fleet of commercial sailing vessels <laughs> that's left. So if you haven't known this already, umbrellas were first produced in America by a German artist and entrepreneur, Francis Beeler, and the Beeler Umbrella House opened its doors in Baltimore during the 1880s. So umbrellas were first brought and sold in Maryland of the U.S. Uh, at the time it wasn't the U.S., but that's pretty neat. So uh, I do want to share with you that if you're a moviegoer, right, the Blair Witch Project, I'm sure you guys have heard of that back in 1999, so following the release of that movie, horror fans would travel to the film's setting near Burkittsville, Maryland. Now the movie was actually shot in nearby Seneca Creek State Park, but people were hoping to investigate the site of the, film, the film's inspiration. And little did the fans know that there was no true story, no urban legend, and no precedent whatsoever for the film. In fact, the writers and producers 
weren't even from Maryland. So <laughs> that was that was weird that you know people would flock there and be like, oh, there's got to be something. That's why they did the movie. And it, completely nothing. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty cool. All right. So uh, one more item before we get to the the next pass here. So on May second, two thousand and twelve. Now this is interesting. Maryland became the first state to institute a tax related to rainfall. Rain. Citizens in nine counties throughout Maryland, plus the city of Baltimore, are charged annually for roofs, sidewalks, and other surfaces on their property, all in an effort to render the state more environmentally sound. This is a true story, folks. It is still a tax today. This tax was in response to a 2010 Environmental Protection Agency mandate aimed towards reducing the pollution levels in the Chesapeake Bay. Now, local officials determine and set the dollar amount residents have to pay each year. The rates are calculated differently for each county and no other bordering state to Chesapeake Bay has passed such a tax. They tax you on rain. I hope nobody from the New York Assembly heard that because they will find a way to tax us. <laughs> uh, New York State, notorious for taxes. I rest my case. All right, across the grain. Speaking of across the grain, has anybody out there tried an OPP pass? A one pass pickup? It didn't do too bad. Now, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The shape was great. The products I used, not so much, if you saw that video. So, uh, it, was, uh, it was a little tender. My face, the days following. But no cuts, no nicks, no weepers, no creepers, as uh, IMCDB would say. So it, it turned out to be okay. And I'd do it again. Certainly not with that soap. In fact, just like I promised, it's behind me there on the bottom shelf. You can hardly see it. It's there. No more shaving with it. Body soap now. But I would do that again. That was a, it was a nice approach especially to treat uh, treat your skin if you shave all the time save on some irritation yeah this is coming around nicely here very good scent on this soap. Very good scent. All right, let me just see what we got here, do a feel about. And we can do a quick third pass going up the cheeks. Of course, the jawline as always. Next, not too bad, right here though. Gotta do a do a cross. Okay. All right, just wet the face a little bit. Leather, anybody? Got enough? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if I could just like beam some over to you guys? Leather sharing, eh? You never know. Star Trek is around the corner, right? Flying cars and whatnot. A couple of uh, congratulations that I want to send out. If you guys don't watch them or you haven't heard of these channels before. So Tim Shaves, congrats on 100 subscribers. 
Uh, he's got a giveaway that he's running. Congrats to Jimmy New York City Wet Shaver. Uh, he's doing, a, well, at the time it was a 50 subscriber giveaway. I think he's even boosted even higher. So by the time this giveaway is done, he's going to have to do another one. <laughs> he's really getting subscribers left and right. So good for him. He's got some good points. So keep shaving, Jimmy. We know you love Sterling, buddy, but that's all right. So congrats to those two. I'm sure there's a lot more out there, but I have not been able to make the rounds and watch all the videos. I'm just going to steal some more. I'm just going to do it. Pretty good, huh? Look at that. Nice peaks. Just gonna use this lather up. No sense in wasting it. Plus, I love the smell. That should be good. We're going to make this pass and then we'll call it a day. So we're getting long. Let's give you the final points on uh, Maryland. All right. So in 1902, Maryland led the charge in statewide workers' compensation, becoming the first in the nation to institute the practice. Four years later, the U.S. passed its first federal law recognizing the program. By 1949, every state in America had adopted some variation of workers' comp. So thank you, Marilyn, for doing that for us. And finally, this is pretty cool, Baltimore's most famous brew, National Bohemian Beer, otherwise known as Natty Boy, and boy is spelled B-O-H was first brewed in 1885. The company's mascot, a one-eyed handlebar mustache icon named Mr. Boy, was introduced in 1936. Now, National Bohemian's main competition at the time was another local brew called Gunther Beer, whose slogan was, Gunther's got it. So if you look at Bohemian Beer, the National Bohemian Beer symbol of Mr. Boy, he only has one eye. In fact, here's a pick. Now, in case you didn't know this, you know, people would ask, what happened to Mr. Boy's other eye? And the answer would be, Gunther's got it. <laughs> so they incorporated their uh, iconic uh, brand and leveraged the competition as, you know, Gunther stole the other eye. So that was pretty ingenious marketing. And for those of you that didn't know this, National Bohemian also invented the six pack. Knowing that four would be too few and eight would be too much, the brewing company was the first to issue six packs during the 1940s. Now today, Natty Boy is currently owned by Pabst Brewing Company and brewed at the Miller Coors Brewing Facilities in North Carolina, Georgia, and Ohio. So have yourself a Natty Boy. That's the last uh, point that I wanted to share about Maryland. So we're gonna do a third pass. Sorry for being so long-winded, but I like talking to you guys. I wanted to share those stories. Let's see if I... Uh, 
get through the rest of the shave here. But no nicks, cuts, creepers, or weepers. Always around the goatee area, but I seem to be doing pretty good. Just have a feel about, oh, that's nice and smooth. Absolutely. Very good. Perfect. Face accomplished. Let's see if we can get That did it. Very good. That did it. Now I do have uh, my hair grows at an angle, so I'm actually going across the grain. I go down in that direction. This blade is not doing bad at all. Just gonna put a little bit on my finger here. A little bit more right there. That did it. All right, let's go for a cold rinse. No stinging, I don't feel any abnormalities or places that uh, Think that are gonna start creeping. That was an excellent, excellent shave. Absolutely. All right. Let's go with some Gillette. Shake it up a little bit. Now this, I've had this for a while, so I don't think that's supposed to be so liquidy, but. Still gets the job done. There we go. Very, very, very light scent. When you put it on, it's almost like a, a lotion smell. But that'll dissipate real quick, especially after the, uh, the you know lotion dries on your face. Okay. Rum Runner. Let's give it a couple squirts. Bet you this has alcohol in it. Not bad. No burn. That smells quite nice. I think it paired well with the, uh, the Artisan Soap Shop. Very nice. In fact, I'm, if I'm not, I wonder if uh, TASS actually made those. 
I know they're from West Coast Shaving. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But anyway, that is my shave for today for the state of Maryland. And I want to thank everybody so much for joining me and spending the time with me. And uh, I'd love to read your comments if you have any. Certainly let me know your thoughts about any of the items that I had read or shared with you. You're, you're, uh, uh, if you're from Maryland and you, you have some other tidbits of information for other viewers that you want to include in the comments, please do that. If I got something factually wrong, please correct me. I don't mind. And uh, certainly click the like button if you like the video and you can click the bell and uh, you'll get notified when we have new videos published. I wish you all the best. We'll talk to you in the next shave. Take care. God bless. Maryland, my Maryland, my mother state to thee I kneel.